guys and welcome back to another video as you can see by the title this video is about tips for making twitch emotes but before we get into that i have a few things i want to say first of all my voice is struggling for some reason my throat hurts i don't think i'm sick i've just been sleeping with my mouth open for some reason and it gets really dry and it hurts and somebody's gonna say oh you're gonna smell a spider don't tell me that because i'll be leaving so I'm here just drinking a delicious limeade I just made and hopefully that keeps me fresh and not sweating like I'm sweating right now already so I don't even know why I said that. The second thing I wanted to say is that um, these emotes you're going to see in the speed paints are from Cobalt Streak on Twitch. I'll link his Twitch down below. This is his character, low core. Uh, well, this is a baby version of his character that I created recently and I do a lot of his emotes. So if you want to see more of my work, you can check him out. and. I'm a bunch of the emotes he has are made by me. You can also check them out in my Instagram or like my other pages. And the third thing I wanted to say is that I wrote all of this from experience basically. So if it's a little convoluted, I didn't have a like heavy reference or anything like that. This just came up from my head. Now that doesn't mean that other people don't have tips like this because they totally do. This is not like anything out of the ordinary. But these are like tips I made just thinking about like the last three years I've worked on them. And you know, I'm a graphic designer. So I know a lot about like branding, marketing, color theory and all that. So that all came into play with this. So just in case you were wondering or if this comes a little convoluted, it's because I just wrote this from my head. And I'm not very good at writing. So here you go. So I've been waiting to make this video for a while now. I've been making Twitch and Discord emo commissions for three years now and I have learned so much. So I wanted to share some of my knowledge in case you want to start making your own emotes or maybe emote commissions as well. This video is not only for people wanting to make the emotes themselves though. This would also help people who are looking to commission some emotes and are not sure what to ask for or what works as an emote. Often I get commission requests for emotes that are impossible to make as emotes or will look bad in chat. So hopefully these tips will help you come up with ideas that an artist can properly make and look good. This might also work for other emotes other than Twitch and Discord, but I'm not familiar with making emotes for anything else, so I'm not sure. I really enjoy making emotes and my emote commissions are always open for that reason. I'm also going to add that these tips are for drawn emotes and text emotes, so if you're looking to have photograph based emotes, this would not be helpful. Let's really quickly go over the requirements for Twitch emotes so we can always have them in mind for the following tips. These are listed in the Twitch help site, which I will link down below. I'm only going over the format guides, but I will recommend reading the rules and guidelines about the content because there's like some stuff you can't have on emotes that you can't. For example, you can't have emotes promoting bullying or sexual harassment or anything like that. You can't have nudity, for, obviously and all those things so you might want to go through that it's like a longer read that's why i didn't add it all here but let's just go over the structure or format guide so the image must be in a png format this means that emotes support transparency which should take into account when saving the emotes um you don't want your emote to have a white or colored square on the back unless that's the intention and that also means that you can use some other formats obviously Depending on whether you wish to use the simple or advanced upload, you will either need a single square between 112 pixels. By the way, I'm just going to say the first number, but just know that when I say 112 pixels, I mean 112 times 112, meaning width and height, but it's a square. So I'm not going to say both numbers because that would just, that would just be a lot for me. So I'm just going to say the first number, but just remember it's the same measurements, height and width. You will need a single square between 112 pixels and 4096 pixels for the advanced upload or three image sizes of 28 pixels, 56 pixels, and 112 pixels for the simple option. Uh, I will talk more about the importance of sizing later on, but let me tell you, ever since I got the advanced setting, I've just been doing it all in one size and not worrying about saving everything three sizes because that was just a lot of stupid extra work that i didn't like to do so i'm very happy that that's a thing the file cannot exceed one megabyte which honestly i've never had a problem with so it shouldn't be a problem like it shouldn't be a big issue please submit your email with a fully transparent background that's actually not necessary you can have an emote fill up the entire space if that's what you want i've done that before 
ensure you have viewed the emote 100% resolution to check that the art has clear lines and if you're including words that the letters are correct and easy to read make sure that lines are sharp no unnecessary blurring or feathering now that doesn't seem like a guide or like a requirement that just seems like a tip but whatever it's a good tip so just follow that <laughs> that's it for that so um let's just get into the tips so my first tip is that always take into account the final emote size. The minimum size on emote is displays is 28 pixels. The smallest size is the most important since it's the one displayed on chat. For me, this is the most important since it's the one that will be seen the most. While it's important that it looks good in other sizes, remember that a lot of the details will be visible in the smallest size and that if you make your emote in a canvas that is too big, when resizing it, it will change. The thing that changes the most in my experience is the lines. I personally like working in three sizes depending on what I'm doing. 112 pixels is the biggest size Twitch used to require since they added a new uploader it accepts bigger sizes. I personally think this is a good size if you're starting to make emotes because you really can't go wrong with it. These days I only use it for text-based emotes. I prefer working on 200 pixels until recently for twitch emotes because it was kinder to my eyesight and i found that it resized pretty well without too much effort so if you're like me and your eyeballs hurt when you work on tiny canvases this might be a better option if you're not sure yet about the amount of details you can add working on smaller canvas sizes will keep you for from adding too much unnecessary details that won't even be visible in the smallest size and I'm a hypocrite for saying this tip because I add unnecessary details all the time as you'll see in this speed paint. I add a lot of unnecessary details. Just can't help it sometimes. Lately, I've been experimenting on working with canvases that are 500 pixels for comfort. At this point, I think I'm pretty good at knowing what details matter. I'm not. So I don't feel like I'm adding too much extra work. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with adding extra details. I do it sometimes and tons of emote artists do it too. It looks nice when you see all the small details when you're displaying your emotes full size on a portfolio, but ultimately it's useless. Most of the smaller details will be visible in the chat version, so you're just working harder for nothing. So if you're in a rush or are not good with details, don't worry about them. Two other things to, t to take into account. One is the line width. If you make lines too thin when resizing, they will disappear. Like if you make them from, if you make the lines thin and then you make the emote smaller, they're, they're gonna disappear. If your style relies on heavy line art or you just have lines in your emote design, make them thicker than usual. Also something I find makes the emote pop more in the smallest size is the color of the shadow and highlights. I make the shadows darker than my usual illustrations and highlights as wide as possible. Otherwise, they might get mixed with the base color in the smallest size. This is all an exercise of practice though. The more emotes you make, the more you'll learn what works with certain colors and designs. I'm gonna leave a link down below on the description of a page where you can test your emotes to see how they will be displayed in chat. It's very useful in case you, for example, threw a special smaller detail and are not sure how visible it is or if you need to make the lines thicker. Just remember, a simple image can look way better than an overly detailed one in this particular case. Now let's talk very briefly about the shape of emotes because I feel like this is something that is what people who have commissioned me struggle with the most. This is close to the last point, but remember the shape of it. It's a square. Usually you can only fit portraits in a small face if you want your facial expressions to be understood clearly. If you want more body in it or a completely full body, facial expression won't be readable. This might not matter if the body pose is the goal, but I've had people want a full character in a single emote and want a very specific emotion showing in their face and that's almost impossible to do. You might want to consider getting multiple part emotes if you want a longer or bigger emote. My next tip is on text on emotes. If you want text on an emote in my experience, two or three words is the sweet spot. You might be able to fit shorter four words or even more, but it might be harder to read. And sometimes if you only put one word and it's like a long word, it just, it just won't look right. <laughs> of course, it all depends on the length and shape of the words and what font the artist chooses. I personally like more square typographies for text emotes. 
since I think they balance really well in height and width. But I also like the pixel style ones too. If you want text on an emo that's also going to have a character in it, for example, a chibi and an animal, first think about how important adding that text is. Can it be expressed with the character? Does it have to say rage if the face of the character is showing rage? Does it have to say hi if the character is already waving? If you decide that yes, text is required for whatever reason, I wouldn't do more than two short words, but ideally only one. You might not want the words to overshadow the character and you want them to still be readable, which sometimes can be a hard balance. Also in the case of a high emote for example, by writing high on it, you're limiting its use. Now you can only use it to say hi. But if you were to just have a character with a hand up waving, it might have multiple purposes. It can work as high or by, or it can even work as raising your hand. Text can limit the intention of an emote, so always have that in mind. Look for artists that are good at drawing expressions as references. So maybe you can see that text wasn't really necessary at all and you can just have a character emoting really well. Now let's talk a little bit about the color of emotes because I think this is a really a big key and one of the most important tips here in my opinion. And it's the eternal debate, dark or light mode. For an emote, it should be both. You can't expect everyone to go either or, your emote should work for both teams. That page I recommended for testing emotes has an option for dark and light mode, so make sure you enable it when you're testing. There's two easy rules, don't add too much black and don't add too much white. Instead of black, use dark browns, blues, or purples. If you absolutely have to go for black for some reason, do what I did on the local emote in the speed paint. Since I had to keep up with the character's black hair and ears to match other emotes, I gave the hair a blue border to make it stand out in dark mode. You can do this with any color and you get the added bonus of it just looks like a super cool highlight. Same thing with white, unless it's going to have a thick black line art, use pastel yellows, pink, oranges. Some people like adding like a white border around the whole emote. I like that in very specific cases, but generally it's not necessary if your emote has good colors. Using complementary colors can make your emote pop up so much more too. I would suggest reading up on color theory too because I can't go into that here. That will, that will need its own video. But it's an excellent tool when you want your emotes to stand out. Next tip is to exaggerate expression and this is pretty self-explanatory. One of the most important things regarding emotes in my opinion is the expression. Make sure to up it up a notch for them. Don't worry about the anatomy or light or shadow accuracy when making emotes. Just make sure that nobody can deny what emotion is on the face of the character. Now that we have a clear idea of the structure of emote, let's talk about what the point of your emote is. Let's talk about actual ideas. Having a clear intention is important when sketching ideas or conveying those ideas to an artist. If you're gonna commission an artist, make sure to send tons of references, by the way, because sometimes people send no reference and I'm like, what am I supposed to draw? I do not know. Your emotes should have a purpose and be something people will want to use, not only in your own chat, but in others as well. Inside jokes are great as emotes for your own chat, for example, but they might not be usable anywhere else because other people might not get it. I'm not discouraging you from having inside jokes as emotes though. Those are great. I love inside joke emotes. But you might want to mix them up with more common emotes so that people feel that they're getting more bang for their buck. That's why common expressions like crying, saying hi, hugs, and hearts are popular emotes. They are usable in many situations and can be used across the board. Also, think about what your specific corner of stream is. Who is your community? If you're a gamer and you rage a lot or you die a lot, rage and rape emotes might be perfect for you. If you're an artist, a save emote or a control C emote might be more what you're looking for. Take this into account because what you don't want is an unusable emote. I don't believe that people solely sub to someone because of their emotes, although I know that is the case for some of their streamers. But this is one way that you can thank them for their support by providing good usable emotes. My next tip is to have a consistent theme. Now this is by no way necessary and I sure break this a lot with my bid and tier emotes, but try to have a consistent theme. 
For example, you can have all your emotes be a cartoon version of yourself, or maybe you can have a channel mascot. By making all the emotes fit together, it makes it so your brand is more clear. If you have text emotes, try to make them all have the same font to create unity in between them. I would recommend choosing a character, it can be you, and work from there what you want to convey with the emotes. Some people use existing characters like Pokemon emotes, or maybe you only play one game, so all your emotes are relevant to it. And don't be afraid to switch your emotes. If you feel like a particular one isn't popular or you don't like it anymore, just change it for something else. If you feel that your emotes are not relevant to your current stream style, then maybe they will be used way less. Keep it fresh. And then we've come to my last tip, and it's to be open to suggestions. This I mostly dedicate to people looking to commission an artist, but as an artist, you might want to ask feedbacks from others as well. Suggestions come from a good place. As the artist, I want your emo to be good and something you're gonna love. I get that sometimes you have this amazing idea you want as an emo, but unfortunately the size might be too small for your idea. Ask your community what they would like to see as an emo. Sometimes our ideas and what our community want differ, and that's okay make a compromise and work on something and if you're an artist and your client doesn't know what they want just tell them this like tell them hey ask your community or i feel like some tips some of these tips might work might work if you want to if you're an artist and you want to make emo commissions like you can ask or tell them these things or maybe send them this video i don't know but yeah i think this is all i have for today i might be missing something though so feel free to ask questions in the comments that you might have about emotes i can also do another video where i record my emo making process instead of just having it as a speed paint if anyone is interested i will show you what brushes i like to use colors how i save them etc so let me know if that's something anyone is interested in and thank you so much for watching leave a like if you like and subscribe and i will see you on my next video bye